This is going to be a uh, two-part series in carburetor sinks synchronization on the 914, 912. They're both essentially the same. Mine's a 914, but the only difference I think is it's got a turbo and a couple little minor differences. Anyway, part one will be a mechanical sink. Part two is going to be the pneumatic sink. And uh, I'm going to do it, uh, show you how to do it the cheapskate way because uh, I am known as a cheapskate, although I like to consider myself frugal, but everybody knows me thinks I'm a cheapskate. So we're going to do it that way. And basically the cheapskate comes in by doing it yourself and uh, the, the uh, gauges that I bought. I bought gauges. I've got them already. Uh, I'll show those in the second part of this when we get ready to do the uh, uh, vacuum and pneumatic sink. So I've uh, prepared a list of things that I've done. I've already done the mechanical sink, so I'm not going to do it, but I will show you what I did, how I did it, and why I did it. So the first things you do is open the cockpit throttle all the way. And what that'll do is it'll push this lever all the way up. You're doing it for two reasons. Number one, you've got to be able to get behind this with a four millimeter uh, hex wrench and use a eight millimeter uh, wrench on this to take the Bowden cable loose. So you want this all the way off and that also takes the tension off this spring and you're going to remove the spring from both carbs and do the both carbs at the same time and so you got the Bowden cables released these springs released and now what you want to do is move this these levers all the way to the idle stop position reattach this spring to this point on the carburetor to keep it to keep the uh, uh, lever fully closed while you're operating now go in the cockpit and pull the uh, throttle, throttle control lever to fully closed and that'll be at this there'll be a stop on your throttle in the cockpit that'll go all the way to close and you want to do that uh, so you get full range with the cables when you're doing when you're uh, operating the throttle okay so you've got the the carburetor levers fully closed you've got the springs keeping them fully open so now the next thing you want to do is back off these idle screws till there's a gap between the stop and the screw because you're going to be making some adjustments there. So next thing you do is get a uh, 0 .004, 4 thousandths inch uh, gap gauge, and you want to put a 4 thousandths gap between uh, these, the idle screw and the idle stop. So then that'll be obviously on both sides. <clears throat> Now, reattach the Bowden cables, and when you do that, make sure you put, take all the slack out of the cables, because you basically, I mean, really what the carb sink thing is, is nothing more than getting both carburetors to open the butterfly valves exactly the same time and the same amount, so you're getting the same vacuum on both sides, and you're getting uh, balanced, uh, balanced with the carburetors. So anyway, uh, so take the slack out, and uh, so that the, the uh, these levers will move equally on both sides. Now, uh, reattach the carburetor springs into the operating position, so it'll be like it is right here. So you want to do that. Uh, open the, the throttle slightly, and that'll push these arms forward a bit. And what that does is it gives you some space under here so you're not pushing on these levers when you're adjusting the screw. Now turn both idle screws one and one half turns uh, down and, and you should have still a gap. You don't want you don't want it to be touching at this at this particular time. So now you want to measure the gaps. You want a, a small gap. You want to measure the gaps between the idle screw and the idle stop on both sides, and you want to equalize those. And basically what you want to do when you equalize those is you want, again, you're going to be having both, both the levers moving at the same time and the same rate. Oh, one other thing I almost forgot. Uh, these uh, 
ferrule nuts. Uh, this is kind of weird because I didn't really understand exactly how these worked. I've watched some videos and also I took a uh, two-day Rotex class from Roger Lee down in Tucson, which was excellent by the way, and I still didn't understand it. But this ferrule nut is not threaded into this bracket. It basically goes in and out on these two nuts. And these two nuts are nine millimeter nuts, which I have no clue why they did that because you look at any wrench set, they goes from eight millimeters to 10 millimeters. So I had to order uh, the, t the nine millimeter wrench and I'll, uh, I'll show that stuff, uh, how I got it, where I got it, most of it was from Amazon. So I'll show that. So you need two nine millimeter wrenches to do these nuts if, you're, if your setup is the same as mine. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing that I didn't understand was this lock wire I thought was basically locking these nuts, but really what it does is it holds this cable into the ferrule nut, so, because the cable will actually pull out of there if you're not careful, so you wrap the safety wire around the cable and then pull it tight to the, uh, to the ferrule nut, so it doesn't, when you're operating the throttle, it doesn't pull back, although I doubt it would do that, but that's, that's the reason for that safety wire. Okay, so anyway, Next thing you do is you operate the uh, uh, thr throttle in the cockpit, fully open, fully closed, and watch and see that everything is going at the same rate and you're gonna have the same uh, gaps. Well, you probably you shouldn't have a gap when you go full, full throttle, you should have uh, no gap on the full throttle. And when you pull it back, it'll be up against the idle stop. And you'll still obviously still have a little bit of pull in the throttle in the cockpit because you that cockpit stop or excuse me the idle stop is uh, back before or after you get to the idle stop here so that that makes some sense so just make sure you, the whole purpose of this thing is to make sure these cables and these levers are moving at the same time the same rate and the same amount and that will be the mechanical sink what I'm going to find interesting when I do the pneumatic sink is how close it is because what I'm planning on doing in the pneumatic sink is I'm going to set it up, put it in the cockpit, start the, start the plane up, get it up to operating temperature. I want to see how close the mechanical sink was to the pneumatic sink. And if it's real, real close, I don't think I'm going to really worry much about pneumatic sink from now on because you have this compensating tube that is right here and this compensating tube will connects both both of the uh, carburetors so it'll take out any minor differences that you might have in the uh, the vacuum in the operating of those those butterfly valves at the carburetor so that's that uh, hope it makes some sense to you I'll put a picture of the uh, uh, the uh, list that I used so you can if you want to take a screenshot print it out if you're going to try to do the same thing I did and I'll talk to you next time when we do the pneumatic sync. Thanks.